So we are going to start this recording by uh, looking at backgrounds. So this kind of segment of the online portion of the web uh, Photoshop for web class. So in this um, <clears throat> in these files, which I'm um, you're going to be they're going to be available to you under the um, resources part of um, this course online, the 5808C. And inside there, you're going to have um, several different files that you can open up and play with, or you can go in and grab, kind of get your own images or do your own artwork or something like that if you're prone to do that in order to kind of set this up. So this particular file right here, this particular file is um, under image image size. So for pixels, this file is 120 by 150 pixels at 72 DPI. Now in Photoshop, underneath this um, Save for Web, the optimization window, which is under File, Save, or Export, that's where they moved it to. So under Export, Save for Web Legacy. Inside here, you can actually preview how this is going to look as a background on the web once you export it and then import it as an image, you know, as a background image and tile it. So to view that, what you want to do is go up to this little icon up here in the upper right corner where it says optimize menu. Once you roll over, it'll say optimize menu. So click on that. And again, you know, go in and save this, of course, as I showed you in the optimization document. But just to show you kind of how you can preview this and how it's going to look like once you get it into an HTML background as a background image, click on this icon, go to Edit Output Settings. And then inside there, you have a whole bunch of different options. So what you want to do, of course, you can, you know, say HTML or whatever, and there's a bunch of different things that you can switch this to. You can look at your slices, which we'll cover in class a little later on here. But you want a background. So you want to see what it looks like as a background. And then you want to make sure that view document as background is checked, not image. So once you make those two changes, then you can say OK. And now what you want to do is go down to the lower left where it says preview. Click on preview. And this is going to pop up and show you exactly what it's going to look like as a background image. It's going to tell you exactly the CSS and HTML for it. So it says left margin equals zero, your top margin, zero margin width, and so on. And this is previewed just as tmp.gif. It also tells you kind of how it was saved, tells you the file size and the dimensions and so on. But this gives you an idea of what it's going to look like as a background. Now, what I want to caution you with is when you're setting up background images like this, I'm going to close this now. But when you set up background images like this, and I'll cancel out of this, you need to make sure that it's not real high contrast. Please don't put any images in the background or any kind of artwork in the background that's really high contrast because you aren't going to be able to read the type or anything, um, even making out images or vector images or whatever in the website if you have all of this high contrast background going on. Um, there's so many websites that do that and you just have to strain to kind of try and make out what that is, um, you know, what the words are saying and, you know, what it's, what it's kind of all about here. But anyway, that's kind of showing you how you can preview it. So let's go on and open up the next file in here, which is, I believe, under 03, the folder 03. And um, 
although I, um, when I upload this, I'm just going to upload these particular images. So don't forget the folder thing. But it's going to be bggraphic2.psd. And in here, what I have is this just um, kind of made up image in here. And the size of this is 887 pixels wide by 29. Now, idealistically, what you want to do is kind of make the width. You can kind of overshoot the width a little bit if you want and do, you know, uh, 1500 pixels or something if you want. But the idea of this is that um, keep the height as teeny, teeny, teeny as you want, as small as you want. I could even take this down to 10 or something if I wanted to, because it's all about kind of this pattern that's running across here. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we go in and we um, preview it. But if I say, uh, I'm just going to say OK here, because all I wanted to do was show you the image size. And again, you know, you can do your heights really, really long and then the width just real thin or whatever. It just depends on if you're using a vertical or horizontal. And then I say, OK, so this is when I go and preview this, you'll see what it looks like. Now, you can create anything. This is how you would create a gradient, too. So you could do just a little strip and I'll show you. In a second here, how you can kind of set that up just as a gradient and then tile it. But let's preview this first. So I'm going to go in and say file, save as, or I mean export, sorry. I'm used to the old save as. Um, and then save for web. And once again, we're going to go ahead and do our preview. So I'm going to click up here in the upper right corner for optimize. And then I'm going to go down here and say edit output settings. I'm going to switch this to background and then I'm going to switch this to background and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And now when I preview this, this is how it comes up. So it's just that nice little background that you can use. Now you might want to argue too, that this might be a little bit high contrast. Um, if you put, um, rectangle boxes that are filled with a solid color or something over this to place your text and that kind of thing. This would work. But right now it's probably a little too high contrast to actually be able to type over without it being really distracting and then creating it, making it difficult to read. Let's look at um, just doing a gradient. So I'm going to cancel out of this. <laughs> and then on this, I'm going to go ahead and do my gradient so I'll get, um, well, let's see. Uh, let me get my gradient window up here. Gradient. And then in here, see, I can switch and choose. I'll just choose one that's automatically already here. So probably this that's up there already looks pretty good. It's just real subtle. Um, I think I'll soften one of these just a little bit so that I'm um, just make it a little brighter so that, you know, you can see it a little easier. And then I'll go ahead and just run this like this to give it that gradient. Now, again, this is going to be awfully, you know, maybe I'll run it the, the other way. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that'll be a little bit, I think, more subtle. But anyway, you get the point here. That's kind of the whole idea of it is you can create whatever kind of pattern or background that you want. And then let's go ahead and just preview what that's going to look like. So export, say for web legacy, click on the edit output settings, go ahead and click here on background, choose background on this, say OK, and preview. And then this is what this is going to look like. So now for something like this, obviously you don't want this here. So what you have to do is, you know, readjust that gradient, um, the pattern or the look or the distance or whatever. But you have to go in and kind of readjust that so that um, you don't have this going here. But, you know, you may have to make it a little bit wider, a little bit thinner um, anyway to ensure that you don't have that disruption there. 
All right. So um, let me close that. But, you know, just before I close it, just looking here, you see how beautiful this is for a nice, lovely little gradient background. So again, you would just have to adjust it so that you have this smooth all the way across here rather than, you know, it repeating itself right here. All right, I'm going to close that. And then the next thing we're going to look at is um, is repeating backgrounds. So right now what I have here is kind of this pattern here. Now the thing with doing kind of a repeating background and a repeating pattern is once you have a pattern like this, you have to use what we call these offset options to be able to kind of set this up so that it repeats correctly and you don't have things kind of floating over each other. But um, right now, if I were to kind of repeat this, it would just kind of repeat this thing over and over again and, and uh, would look similar to what that tree looked like. But let's say we want this pattern kind of repeating um where uh it's kind of more in a, a diagonal and the pattern is repeating on um different angles up and down the line here so in order to do that what you have to do is um have a perfect starting out with kind of a perfect square here so i'm going to go up and change the actual canvas size to being a perfect square. So I'm going to make it 200 pixels by 200 pixels for the width and height and say, OK. So that's going to give me kind of this appearance. If I zoom out, you'll see kind of what it looks like here. I'm going to select these, this whole pattern layer. So I've got the pattern, so I'm just going to do a Command A and then copy it, Command C to copy. And I'm going to save that a second. I'll um, go back to it in one minute here. Then I'll deselect all, so just Command D to deselect all. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, with that pattern layer selected, I'm going to go to the filter, other, and then offset. And in here, I'll change the horizontal to 100 pixels and the vertical to 100 pixels. And now you see you get kind of this pattern here going around it on the other side um, so that it looks, I guess, pretty good. Make sure that wraparound is on and then say OK. Then the next thing we'll do is paste that that we copied. So remember, we had copied this whole thing and put it on the um, background. And sorry, I've got a phone call coming in here. And I can't pause the recording. Hello. Sorry about that, everybody, and I don't want to pause this. <laughs> um, I guess I can cut it before I upload it, but that's a lot of work. Anyway, um, so now we're going to paste this back in here. So now we have it pasted. And then I'll go ahead and optimize this and show you how it is optimized. So I'm going to go up to File, Export, and then Save for Web Legacy. And now you'll see that here it is, but we want it to be a PNG 24 so that we get that smooth pattern. Now what I could do, let me uh, go in and kind of fill this background all the way with white. And then you'll be able to kind of see this a little better, how this pattern is playing out. <coughs> now I'll go ahead and export and say save for web. 
and now you see it's going to be quite lovely. So I'm going to go up here and show you what it looks like at an output settings, um, background, and then background image. Say OK. Click on preview. And there you have this kind of lovely little pattern going on here. So that's, so to get this, the bottom line is in order to kind of do this and preview it correctly, you have to make sure that you have a square to begin with so that that canvas is squared off. You know, mainly it's about the canvas and making sure that the canvas is in a square and that you're doing the hundred by, or, you know, whatever it is that it's a square, it doesn't have to be a hundred by a hundred or 200 by 200 can be whatever size you want it to be. But keep in mind that you're doing a pattern here now and you're trying to optimize that for the web. So you don't want to do some big, huge thing. You know, a big, huge file size, okay? So just make sure that you go in and, um, you know, optimize it accordingly. I wouldn't get much bigger than 200, but, you know, stick with somewhere around in there or 100 by 100 or something. You know, it just depends on how small you want that pattern to appear on the web when you do go in and um, preview it. So um, I'm going to use it for uh, a background. All right. Um, that kind of covers, gives you a general idea, I think, of backgrounds. Uh, when we meet on Saturday, if you have any questions about this or when you preview it and you have any questions in general, just go ahead and um, email me at the T R E N I E R at S D C C D dot E D U. And I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right. This here is just kind of another pattern that you can go in and use as, um, you know, that you can cut up and use as kind of a gradient pattern or something like that. But again, don't make things too high contrast. This is way too high contrast, and that's the reason why I wanted to show you. You just aren't going to be able to read the text that way. All right, that's it for backgrounds.